Hey everyone, King 77 here from the AC Syndicate team here to finally do a full review video on my Sprint HTC Evo 4G LTE. I know a lot of you guys have been asking me to do this. Of course, I wanted to get a full uh, usage out of it to make sure that I could properly review it and go over everything that I that I feel necessary. But anyways, uh, here it is, my HTC Evo 4G LTE. Let's jump into the review. All right, so here we go. We are gonna jump into the review video. Um, I might make this two parts depending on how long and lengthy I get. I do like to make sure I do cover everything. So, uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and get into it. So right away, you'll of course see the 4.7 inch display on the device. Uh, it's obviously very big, very large. Um, if you're not used to this size, of course, if you're coming from a previous Evo, you've got your Evo 4G and your Evo 3D uh, right next to it. You will notice it is vastly different, actually. It is, it's crazy how much different HTC has made this device. So you'll see the two, 3D and the 4G are, the original 4G are actually very, very similar. Design-wise, um, that is one thing I really didn't like about it, how bulky it was and how, I mean, they really didn't uh, change up the design very much at all. Um, but you will notice with, of course, your Evo LTE, it's very thin, um, design's much better, screen size is nice and large. So overall, um, of course, it is much better. All right, so let's go over the hardware and some specs and such. So, um, of course, on the front, you have three capacitive buttons down at the bottom, back, home, and recent running apps. I'll get to what recent running apps is once we get to the software. But anyways, um, they are capacitive and not on-screen buttons, such as the Galaxy Nexus, so pretty much what you're used to with the old uh, Evo devices. Up at the top here, you've, of course, got your speaker. In regards to the speaker, you will kind of notice that um, some hair and dust will kind of collect in there. Um, it is kind of difficult to get out. You can um, just kind of blow in there and it does clean it out pretty well, but of course it is gonna, some is gonna still stay in there. So that's a little design feature that I'm not too fond of, the fact that uh, it does collect dust and hair, but obviously not too big of a deal. Um, on the front as well, you have a front-facing camera, 1.3 megapixels. Um, let's go ahead and check out the side here. The left side, you have your charging port. Right side, you've got volume up and down, along with a camera button, which is great that they included that. I'm very uh, pleased with the inclu um, inclusion of that. So uh, on the back here, um, you've got a little, uh, kind of a strange color scheme design going on, um, in my opinion, but uh, down here, you've got more of a black um, mate look to it. Uh, you have a red, um, red kickstand. So I'll get to the kickstand in a sec. So you have a red line here that is basically where the kickstand in is. And you also have more of a glossy dark black um, look up at the top that collects a high amount of fingerprints. So unfortunately, I wish they would have uh, went with the full body on the back actually with uh, just this bottom section with it being on the top as well. But from what I hear, uh, since this device does include NFC, uh, the plastic top, because the top is plastic, the bottom is more of a metal, um, the plastic top doesn't interfere as much with the metal, um, with the NFC, the NFC uh, hardware is up here. So um, that is from what I hear, so that uh, doesn't deter me as much. I just wish they could have made it more of a similar color or a less of a way to collect fingerprints, because it does collect a lot of fingerprints, which is obviously not a huge deal, it just, it just does. Of course, you got your eight megapixel camera, LED flash, uh, you got a speaker here. At the bottom, you have a microphone. Up at the top here, you've got your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack along with another microphone and the power button right up there. I do wish the power button was on the side over here though, as when I hold it, I hold it like this and my thumb is right over here. So I wish the power button was right there as opposed to being on top. I much prefer it over on the side. That's just a personal preference though. Obviously it's different. Um, the speaker on the back, uh, sound quality is pretty good. It's decent. I'll probably play a YouTube video or a song or two so we can check it out. But um, let's go ahead and check out the kickstand. On the kickstand, I do really like it. They definitely did a great job with this kickstand. I believe it's some kind of aluminum. I'm not positive though. Um, you'll hear when you open it up, it actually clicks out. So you'll hear it click, and when it clicks, it's actually somewhat difficult to push it back in. The reason being, of course, when you set it down, you've got your, uh, your kickstand going on there. You can also flip it over, 
and put it up as a kickstand on the other side as well. So you can put it both ways, um, which of course is nice. In my actually unboxing video, I talked about how when you charge and you put it down, of course you can't use the kickstand, but a lot of you guys pointed out you can flip it over and use it so you can still charge because the charging port's up on the top. I do prefer the charging port to be on the top or the bottom. The bottom's probably my biggest preference for the charging port. I don't necessarily like the sides of charging ports. So overall button scheme, I much rather have the power button on the side, power charging port up on the bottom or top, but I love the position of the camera button and it's really great to have this camera button. In regards to this back plastic casing, you can actually take it off. I believe the reason you can take it off is obviously because you have an external micro SD card slot. Uh, you can slide your fingernails in there if you can get it in. It's actually somewhat difficult to take off. Let me pop it off. So, of course, we have our back. Um, there's only a slot for a micro SD card right there. I haven't put one in myself, but you can if you would like to, up to 32 gigs. It does have 16 gigabytes of on... Uh, on-screen storage, on-screen on-board storage, sorry about that. So um, you don't necessarily need a micro SD card, but if you'd like to have more memory on your device, you can obviously put one in. Of course, you got the camera here as well. You will notice with the back casing here that uh, um, it's it got nothing to do with the camera, the back here, which I do like. It's it, They actually put this uh, indent here on the back casing as more of a protection for the camera. So when you slide uh, this in, you will see that it just covers the camera. So when you do actually put the... Um, the phone down it does kind of uh, lean on this right here but it does protect the camera so don't think when you set it down it's scratching the camera this is actually a protective uh, covering of the camera which I was worried about but uh, it does protect it so uh, that's enough about the hardware of course inside you have a 1.5 gigahertz Snapdragon uh, S4 dual core processor actually 1.5 gigahertz it's it's been really great um, of course I just unlocked the phone um, in regards to the RAM, you have one gigabytes of RAM, which is uh, a little bit less. You got the S3 coming out soon, Galaxy S3 with two gigabytes of RAM. So um, you got a little bit of difference there. That's one of the slim differences. Screen-wise, as I said, 4.7 inches, and you have a 720p TFT LCD display, not a Super AMOLED display like uh, Samsung does come with, which is probably my favorite screen, but I do really enjoy this screen. I have not had any issues with dull colors. The colors do look bright. Um, I, I definitely like it compared to the Super AMOLED display. Let me grab a Super AMOLED display um, Galaxy Nexus here. So, um, of course, it looks a little darker because of the background. If I had a little brighter background, it would look lighter. But uh, colors do look good. I do prefer the Super AMOLED still, but I still wouldn't deter you from this device because of the screen, because the screen is still really great. Uh, no issues viewing it outside as well in the bright light. I usually have auto brightness on. So um, no issues in regards to that, of course. So um, I, I do really like the screen. I know that was a big thing for all of you guys. I got a lot of questions asking about that screen, actually. So uh, pricing-wise, it is $199 on contract. You could probably get it for about $150 on contract right now, and I believe it's $550 off contract. Of course, you can check Craigslist or eBay for it cheaper if you want to get a clean ESN off contract. So obviously, you do um, have to pay a decent price for this phone. Uh, inside, one thing that uh, a lot of people do not like is that you can't take the battery out. Um, you cannot remove the battery, and it does have a 2,000 milliamp hour battery, in case you were wondering. So um, it, it's actually a very nice battery, um, and with battery life, in regards to battery life, I get great battery life to kind of show you that. I've ran it for a little while today. Um, let me go to power and under battery use. So right now I'm at about 59% and I've almost gotten to eight hours and my screen on time has been over an hour. So overall, I mean, I've used it pretty moderately, pretty actually pretty heavily at certain points in time and such. So um, overall, it's been really great battery life. I'll get consistent uh, full day's use out of it, even with heavy use, I'll, I'll really, unless I'm um, using navigation a lot. Of course, if you've, I've used navigation a couple hours at a time without charging my device, which drains the battery quite a bit, but um, with that would be severely heavy use, actually. So with just heavy use, I've, I really get all day. I get about 18 hours consistently, actually. So, I mean, it's overall been a great experience battery life-wise, which um, the, the thinness of the, the device is actually attributed to not having a removable battery. It's a lot easier to get the device as thin overall the device is extremely thin um, if you want to put it up 
up next to a phone such as the Epic 4G Touch. Um, you will notice they're very similar in uh, thickness, of course. So uh, you, you will see that they are very similar. I really can't tell with my naked eye which one is thinner. Um, if I had to guess, it would just be a complete guess though. I would say they're the same. So I'm not gonna take an opinion there because I really can't tell. So about the same thinness as the Epic 4G Touch. Um, it's very, very light though, uh, weight wise. Uh, pretty comparable though. Um, I would say it's really hard to tell. I'd say the Epic 4G Touch is a little bit lighter though. So um, in case you were wondering there, I didn't really look up the specs on uh, thinness or lightness, but uh, overall it's, it's really good. So. That's enough about the hardware and specs and such. I did want to cover that uh, as you guys, so you guys knew basically for you uh, kind of geeks that do like that uh, tech outlets. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do a new segment of my review video, something I haven't done before. I'm actually going to do a drop test of the device so you can see. I have a tile floor down there um, that I'm going to drop this on actually. So I am here with my Evo 4G LTE, of course. We've got the device right here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and drop it down over the balcony here and we will see what kind of damage it is done. So here we go. We've got three, two, one. So right away it does come with ice cream sandwich with a Sense 4.0 manufacturer overlay, obviously HTC overlay. So uh, when I go to about and I go to software information, you will see Android version 4.0.3 out of the box actually. So um, it does have ice cream sandwich, Sense version 4.0 as well. Uh, which is obviously great. Uh, the latest Android OS version, operating system version, uh, is on this device. And of course, I'm sure as more updates come, this will get updated to another one. Uh, right away, you'll see with Sense, you've got this kind of accordion um, look to it. That's just kind of kind of a Sense feature um, that uh, is on this device. Um, you will obviously remember over scroll glow from other devices when you hit the top or bottom, but when you hit the top or bottom, it actually doesn't do anything, but if you scroll more once it hits the bottom, you will see it does that accordion feel. That's just kind of a, a sense feature. I don't mind it at all, actually. Um, it's not a big deal because it doesn't lag up the device very much. I haven't been a sense fan at all in the past due to the fact that it's been so um, kind of feels really like bloatware on the device and makes it really laggy but overall I've had a very very great experience with Sense 4.0. It's been very smooth. I haven't had any issues with really any lag. Uh, one thing I do notice is when I open up the app drawer, I don't know if you'll notice it this time or not, but you'll see when I open up the app drawer, it kind of glitched a little bit. That is because they do have a bit of a um, kind of a, a transition animation. So you'll see you've got that transition animation when you open up the app drawer. It kind of feels kind of laggy and it, it stutters a little bit and doesn't have that nice transition effect. Obviously, I do really like the transition effect, but unfortunately, if, if you kind of leave it sitting there, that's just a little tiny thing um, with sense, but overall, it's been very smooth. Everything else has been smooth. Um, so uh, j just in regards to that, as you've heard me talk in the past about sense and not enjoying sense at all. Uh, but uh, as I said, ice cream sandwich, you do have more of a stock ice cream sandwich launcher. You have horizontal app drawer here with all your uh, awesome applications going on. I'll get to those in a sec. You have five icons down at the bottom. The middle one obviously being the app drawer itself. You've got, you can customize them. You just press and hold and you can drag uh, certain apps down there. You can have folders. As you can see, I have a Google Apps folder that I tap on and it opens it on up. Um, you'll see it has four icons right there. It's a little bit different than the Galaxy Nexus but uh, yeah you'll see those little icons going on there but to create a folder all you have to do is basically press and hold on an app and drop it on one another so you'll see I have a new folder there I can tap here and rename it if I'd like to um, so you got that nice folder feature going on with this launcher um, lock screen wise the lock screen is actually nice I do like it it doesn't seem to make it laggy at all you've got all your shortcuts here um, what I don't like though is that all your shortcuts down here have to be the lock screen shortcuts here. There's apps, and there's no way that I can find that you can change it. So you'll see I have phone, Gmail, messages, camera. Um, you've got phone, Gmail, messages, camera all on my dock bar as well because obviously you have to have those. But 
what you can do is basically click and drag an application down into the circle and it's a kind of a shortcut into that uh, into that application. When you get a text message, you'll see like a box up here that basically previews the message. You can tap on that box and drag it down to the circle and it will bring you directly to that message instead of just the messaging application for those of you that have this device and don't know that. But uh, you'll see I drag the camera into the circle and it will bring up the camera right away. Um, in regards to the camera though, the camera is phenomenal. It is by far the best camera on any smartphone that I own. It is magnificent. I love it. Um, I, I really can't say enough about it. It's one of those cameras that I do like to show off to people even and just kind of show them the amazing features that it does have. I did take some pictures, just some really basic pictures outside. Um, this is actually zoomed in with the zoomed in feature. Um, so uh, I took that. Um, this is not zoomed in. Um, so you'll see overall picture quality is great outside and inside. I've got a couple here um, as well. This is kind of a close up. What I do like about this is how close you can actually get to something and take a picture. I'll show you that in a second. But I took some couple pictures of uh, these phones and uh, they look great. So overall picture quality has been great with that 8 megapixel camera. Um, high definition camera. So what I'm talking about with how close you can get to your image. Here's my finger right here. Um, I can basically you'll see right here see how it focused on my hand and I'm very very close to my uh, to my hand and it, it actually focused on it very well I don't know if you guys can tell that or not but it did um, it did a great job at doing that of course you can use your camera button or the on-screen button here to uh, take it you can press the button halfway and it kind of focuses it doesn't take long at all to focus and take the picture uh, one thing you can do actually is let's say I'm taking a picture of my original Evo here um, if I want to take a picture of it, um, all I have to do is just kind of press the button and it takes it right away. And then I can turn, take another one, it takes it. I can turn, take another one, it takes it. So let's go ahead and view those pictures. So you'll see I took this one, I took this one, and I took this one all consecutively. There's zero shutter lag. It doesn't take at long at all to basically take one, snap one, take another one, snap one. Um, one thing you can do actually is with this button or the on-screen button, of course you can use either one. I always use this button is actually um, press and hold the button and it takes a bunch of pictures in a row. So let's go ahead and try this out. So I'm gonna kind of move this phone to show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna press and hold it down and move the, as you saw, I moved the camera. So it's saving the images. What it does is it takes a bunch of pictures in a row and it picks the best one. Uh, so if you're basically uh, sitting there with two people smiling next to each other, you can press and hold. It'll take a bunch of shots and then it'll pick the best one. You can hit best shot and then you, it'll say your best shot will be saved and do you wanna delete the rest of the images? Say no or yes. Of course you can delete them. You can scroll through and check them all out. So you'll see as I scroll, scroll through them, it's got me doing things in action. Um, and it works very well outside inside. I took pictures of people playing basketball um, a Couple of my friends were playing basketball and I had them do a layup and took it and it worked very well as well outside so uh, Just overall a really great feature to the camera that best shot feature There's a lot more settings that you can go through you can have different effects distortion depth of field a bunch of different ones there of course you can take um, 1080p quality uh, high-definition video and while you're taking a video, so let's say I'm recording a video, I press the record button, so I'm recording it now. Um, what I can do is actually take a picture while I'm recording. I can press this button and it takes a picture, or I can press the camera button and it, takes a, it actually ends the video. So while you're taking video, you have to press the on-screen um, camera button to take a picture, so you can do that while taking video, which is great. Uh, go into your settings. Of course, you got your camera. You can choose main or front. So let's go ahead and show the front-facing camera. So of course, I'm here with my my trusty camera. So um, overall, though, uh, very good quality. Uh, I believe it's a 720p front-facing camera. In case you were wondering, you can take 720p. Uh, 720p there so that would be the camera just I really wanted to cover it because it's one of the best features about this phone um, it's basically the Evo LTE is basically the one X of sprint in case you were wondering so if you've used the one X before uh, definitely check out the Evo LTE because they're very similar and uh, of course they're they're great so um, we also have a couple different things actually um, it's obviously as it's called it's called the Evo 4G LTE unfortunately there is no LTE right now um, hopefully Sprint rolls it out soon, but it might not be coming to your area anytime soon. I'm not sure exactly when they plan to do so. 
Um, overall though, signal strength has been very good. Um, when I'm out and about um, in certain areas, I will still get signal strength. I really haven't had any dead zone spots yet hit any with this device. I've had pretty good signal strength. 3G speeds have been good as well. Uh, Wi-Fi uh, has been good, so no issues there with uh, Wi-Fi range and such. So if you're worried about those radios, it works very well. GPS, I cannot say enough about how awesome GPS is. It is by far the best GPS that I've used on any device. I can sit inside and get a GPS lock anywhere, um, and it just works really well. Um, I'm always on the go actually using navigation, especially lately. I'm always using navigation on my device, and I go to it. Um, I go to my maps. I get a lock right away pretty much within five seconds every time. So if you're one that uses your phone a lot for navigation or um, GPS, definitely be sure to check out this device. Uh, so it, it is obviously a great phone for navigation and such. So uh, another thing I wanted to cover is the browser itself. So let's go ahead and go to the internet browser, uh, load up a website, let's try google.com. Google.com, hit enter. So here we go, we are loading up google.com. In my opinion, I really don't like this stock browser very much at all. I much prefer either the um, stock ice cream sandwich browser on the Galaxy Nexus, or I just download Google Chrome, actually, since it's an ice cream sandwich device. That's what you can do. Um, I much prefer using Google Chrome. Just overall, I don't really prefer it. As you can see, the uh, navigation bar up at the top is gone. It uh, gets rid of it. Obviously, you can make changes in, so it doesn't do that. Um, but uh, overall, I really don't uh, I don't like it. I do like how it goes into full screen mode, but sometimes it can get kind of annoying if you want to jump to a notification really quickly. But uh, let's go ahead and load up a kind of a, a more um, a more site that requires kind of more graphics and such other than Google. So let's load up acsyndicate.net. Um, and of course it loads up the desktop. You can actually go to menu and you have different options. You can view the desktop site, enable flash player, so of course you can toggle the mobile and desktop sites. Um, overall down here you have tabs. When you tap on the screen you have tabs. You can open up a new tab, a new incognito tab, which is a new feature where it doesn't save your browsing history. Um, that's basically when you go to the top and you scroll more, you can hit add to, bookmark saved, or tabs. Uh, scrolling though, uh, pinching to zoom hasn't been very laggy at all. You'll see you get some little white gaps going in there. There's no checkerboarding at all. Um, but uh, I, I don't see very much lag. You'll see it goes white for a little bit and then focuses in. Of course, you got text wrapping, so which is what it's doing when it goes white. It's kind of wrapping the text to where your screen pinches and zooms. So overall, though, a very good browser in regards to that. Chrome beta works well as, uh, as well. Um, so uh, there you have it there with the stock browser. Just an overall, I don't necessarily like the overall UI of it and such, so... Um, I, I mean, it's obviously a personal preference, so, but the browser works well itself. It loads up the pages fast, and you've pinched zoom really great. So if you do like the stock browser, definitely um, not any issues with those. Just kind of feature-wise, I'm not a big fan of it with no tab button, and it kind of you can't really pull down the notification bar as you do that. Of course, there's ways you can change it. You can go into settings, and you should be able to change full screen. I haven't really messed with them, as I like Chrome beta the best anyways. Um, but there's that browser. A lot of you guys wanted me to check out the browser as well. One thing I do want to uh, want to show you guys, it's actually quite interesting. I'm going to turn off my Wi-Fi, and you will see I'll connect to my 3G. So right now, I'm connected to 3G up at the top. What I'm also going to do is grab my browser, actually, internet browser, and put it on this screen. And I'm going to make a phone call. So let me go ahead and dial in a number really quick. I just kind of pulled my phone away because I don't want anyone to know some personal numbers here. Okay, so I'm going to make a call here. So you'll see I've got, uh, I'm going to call Sprint. It's just kind of a hotline kind of number. So it, it checks your service. I'm going to put it on speakerphone. So you'll see I'm on it. And I'm going to load up uh, another website. So you'll see Google loaded on up. And if I wanted to go to acsyndicate.net, hopefully before it hung up. It didn't, it did hang up, but uh, basically you can use 3G while on a call which is great. So you do have 3G data while on a call with this phone. Um, it's actually kind of interesting. I haven't done any research in why it works, but it does work. Um, I, again, I don't know why it works, but it does. You can use 3G while on call. I thought it was always a CDMA GSM thing where CDMA, CDMA devices could not do it. 
and GSM devices could, such as AT&T and T-Mobile using GSM and Sprint and Verizon using CDMA. So again, I'm not sure why. I'll have to do some research and figure that out, but it does work. So that's actually a nice feature of the phone itself. You can use 3G while on calls. It's not a carrier thing, but uh, when we pull down the notification bar, what you can do is actually swipe away notifications. So you see I swiped it away. When you have multiple ones, it's nice. It's actually an ice cream sandwich feature. Um, that's just a little note I wanted to make. Uh, you have a settings button right here. I do kind of wish there were some quick toggles such as Wi-Fi, GPS, etc. up in this notification bar. Unfortunately, they don't have those in Sense 4.0. I kind of wish they did, but they don't, of course. Um, but yeah, so you got 3G on calls, which is great. Uh, you got ice cream sandwich. I'm going to go ahead and cut this video out for now. This will be part one. Um, you're definitely going to want to check out part two. I'm going to be going over some, actually a lot of different other stuff as well. Just doing some speed tests, testing out some games and doing other tests as well. So be sure to check out my part two of the review um, on the Evo LTE. And uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing as well. Press that subscribe button. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and again, check out my uh, part two of the review.